This poor thing can't drink water. The first time I saw him, he was in a box. He was just a little bit bigger than a bar of soap. Half of his tail was dangling. I was on vacation in Malaysia. I took him to the vet. They snipped off the bad part of his tail. I invented a tail cone for him to wear instead of a neck cone. After a couple of weeks, he was feeling so much better. I think they called you the burrito cat because I wrapped you up in a liner and you look like a burrito. This guy's getting really clingy. He doesn't like it when I put him down. I didn't decide to keep him. But four days in, I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. The burrito was too small to fly. So he would be okay with my cat when he comes back home to Hong Kong with me. I exposed him to other cats in Malaysia. And he was definitely a little standoffish. I have trained myself to not move when I'm sleeping. I literally took him everywhere. I took him to groceries. I snuck him onto trains, dinners. Just kind of snuck him everywhere. He was finally big enough to come home. I think all of my cats are just gonna get bullied by this little rascal. He went in, he hissed, he snarled, he swiped at my cats, and they just let him. He basically owned the place. He's two and a half right now, and that's when I got Strawberry. Love at first sight for Strawberry, but he hated her so much. He just doesn't want anything to do with her. Until she's not at home, he's just pacing back and forth in front of the door. I open the door and then he's like licking her. The lesson I learned from this guy is the best thing to do is never the easiest thing. All the trouble that we had to go through to save his life, definitely worth it.